What is happening guys? Welcome back to Red Beard's Garage and on today's episode we're finally going to run the Yamaha buggy. This thing has been a project for too long. Today all we have to do is get the kickstart uh, done up. I forgot and went ahead and put the recluse clutch in in the last episode and I wasn't supposed to do that until we put the new block on. If you guys remember uh, Corey at Lansdowne Fa Family Racing is helping us to upgrade to an electric start uh, ATV block. So that's going to be huge because we don't got to kickstart this thing. But unfortunately, I installed the recluse clutch. With the recluse clutch, you can't pop start it because that was our whole plan. And uh, now we have to do the kickstart, which the kickstart will be a nice addition to the frame just in case the battery's dead or whatever when we do the ATV setup. Uh, but we have to get that done. We also got to put a harness bar in uh, to support the seat belts, and that is going to double as a upper engine support. So we got to build that out. We got to hook up the rear brakes. Then it's just fix a small coolant leak, put oil, gas in it and cool it and then we're ready to start it so let's get right into it with doing the kickstart first this is how we're going to do the kickstart because the engine is tucked in the frame now of course if we was to put a kickstart on it where it's supposed to go it actually hits the frame right here there's no way to kickstart it and your foot would be inside here and this bar blocks it so i'll come up with a pretty smart solution i have that tube there notched and another one just like it notched if we go over here i've taken the kickstart apart and I machined out these splines and I've TIG welded these in the end of a piece of one inch tube. So then I took a standard go-kart bearing you can get off Amazon and this is gonna support the kickstart at the end. So let me install this on the engine real quick and I'll show you how it's gonna work. So if we take this, it'll sleeve right there on that spline and then we can weld these supports in that hold this to the chassis back there. So we got a support right here on the kickstart and that extends the kickstart so we can build an arm set up and i can either stand on the rear a arm and kickstart it it's not what i would normally do i wouldn't be normally using a kickstart engine but if you remember centurial donated this dirt bike very uh generous of them and uh for this project so we're going to use what we got so then i can plasma cut me an arm with a piece of rod stock on it so we can kick it out in this area and it should work pretty fine Let's just hope the thing isn't hard to start. Today's video was brought to you by and saved by Blaster. And we're not talking about PB Blaster, but later in the video, you'll literally see how PB Blaster saved this video. Uh, but we're talking about brake clean. And the big thing about Blaster's brake clean is it is non-chlorinated. And that's very important if you're cleaning parts that you're about to weld, you definitely don't want a chlorinated brake clean. So there's this non-chlorinated, super good stuff. I use this in place of a degreaser where I don't want a film left over. When you're doing brake parts, cleaning brake rotors, or if you're bleeding brakes, you wanna get all that brake fluid off and brake clean's gonna do the job better than a degreaser. A degreaser is gonna leave a film and you have to also wipe it up. This evaporates, of course. If you never use brake cleaner, what are you doing with your life? We have, we use this far more than anything else in the shop. Clean our parts that we're about to weld clean off the weld table when there's oil or grease on it and then we go back and shine it up with multi-max but blaster has a ton of products to check out they're not just your old school grandpa's pb blaster they have a ton of stuff that's going to get the job done in your shop they're going to combat rust they're going to eat through rust fight against rust and clean up afterwards blaster thank you for sponsoring today's video they save it later so stay tuned okay so 
we need a harness bar and your harness bar needs to set like uh, whatever height the holes are for your harness you need to match that with where your harnesses wrap over because if it was lower like if your harness came through the seat and went down it would compress your spine in an accident so i made this harness bar and i made it in two pieces and then put it together with this one and a half inch the reason i did that was a to mess up on the bins b it worked out really well because i don't have any one and a quarter clamps but i have one and a half inch clamps uh, so i have these two piece locking collars that i can clamp onto this middle section just so, like that just like that <laughs> So why that's important is I need to support, if you'll come over here, I need to support the upper engine mount so all the power won't make it twist. So what I did was I machined two blocks to put in between this original mount. And then I notched this this morning. It sits down on there. I weld that to those blocks, tack it a bunch of times. And then I can take that clamp, clamp onto this and build an arm that goes down probably out of uh, 3 sixteenths off the plasma table so I can make it beefy and instead of just doing a small piece of tubing. So when I need to remove the engine, I can unclamp this and then bolt it from the top of the engine, but it still supports it. We're gonna set it, Lonnie, and figure out, it needs to go down on your side. My hose was caught on something. What do you think, Becca, looking from back there? Um, Please. I think it looks fun. Oh. <laughs> this will. Oh. <laughs> I right on the way. <laughs> so that'll clamp like that. I just got to get it lined up, centered on that piece down there, and then I can build flat stock top setups that'd be real nice i like that about a bit okay that so we'll do it y'all clamp that a few moments later all right so lonnie came over and we jumped ahead of ourselves a little bit and got a few things done so i made an upper engine support so this ties on to the uh, seat belt bar and it's fully removable so if we need to remove the engine we can so the way I set this engine up is it could slide to chain tension up the chain, but I'm actually not going to slide it because there's too many factors with an engine like this uh, to be able to slide it. So what we're going to eventually do is build a chain tensioner, a manual chain tensioner that we can loosen a jam nut, tighten up the bolt, and set our chain tension as it stretches. Uh, so we made this I-beam style quarter inch thick upper engine support, super strong, and it should keep it from just rocking side to side. That's all we're, you know, like torquing the top of the engine so that's all done i will build some supports later that support the um the seat belt bar to the rest of the chassis there's a few more tubes i want to add but we also finished the kick start it's not 100 percent. i do want to add some webbing inside the open area there um, to make it stronger and cut the tube down a little bit and what's cool about this setup is you can still actually use the bolt that bolts the kickstart on the engine you can run a long allen in there tighten it up it doesn't affect like it doesn't hit the tires the suspension travels it's a pretty cool setup so i went to kick it and this thing has set in the garage for most of its life i mean this project got drug out way too long like a lot of them does and i do apologize for that but if it was outside it was tarped up if it was inside it's not getting rained on i started kicking the engine over really easy and it wasn't moving it was like it was hydro locked then i basically pulled the spark plug the spark plug had some rust on it, it wasn't wet it was like dried rust but it's got me pretty fearful for this engine so i got it to start turning over i soaked it i soaked it in some good old pv blaster this stuff of course you know it eats rust like crazy so I soaked it overnight. So right now we're gonna see, let's try to kick it over and see what happens. Isn't it ironic that this was a blaster sponsor video and we needed it the most? We're going to tuck this over top to catch any blaster. Jesus. Woo! It's 
so it's not locked up that is huge i mean it was actually locked up but it broke its way free oh that's so i'm telling you guys i was very frustrated when i found out there was some moisture in there i'm bet you're wondering how i'm going to kick start this it's going to normally set in the upright position here we just climb on the a-arms put our foot on it just like that for some reason it don't return Now we'll put a new spark plug in it and we can uh, finish up a couple things and do our first test fire. So we're ready to put oil in it. We've got to hook up a kill switch really quick. I've got it partially made. And uh, so oil, gas, we already have cooling in it. Probably have to add some as it warms up and gets all the air out of the system. But um, we got some Amsoil, their uh, dirt motorcycle oil. So this is specifically blended for dirt bikes. Uh, make sure to use the Clovis links in our video description. So we don't get paid nothing from Amsoil, uh, but it does help the dealer out that helps us. He bought the dyno for the channel. He's a great guy. So Clovis, uh, use the links in the video description if you need any Amsoil products. The best oil in the world. So we're going to pour in probably three quarts of this in this. Okay. Moment of truth. I'm scared. Oh, there's an impression. It could be also where the cylinder's really wet with blaster. Like I sucked all I could out and I tried to uh, do the best I could, but I bet that is the main thing. So I'm gonna pull the plug real quick. Okay, so that was pulling the plug and just kicking it. It definitely was old, like it's just wet with blaster. And we are getting spark now. We wasn't at first, but I think the spark plug was so wet that it just couldn't get a spark. I'm gonna kick it. We'll see a mist come out if there's still a lot of blaster in it. Yep. so we know the cylinder's dry now. Okay, I'm gonna put the spark plug back in and kick it a few more times, and then I'm done for the nut. One more time. Must work out.
I didn't overheat her too bad. Woo! It's guzzling. Yeah, it's hot. <laughs> but, uh, so I got electric fan on it, but we have to put the inline controller, that, like the thermostat, and put a battery on it. That has to happen next time because that mother's hot and she's right behind my head. So if anything was a fail, I'm scalded. Like, that's going to ruin me. You grab one of those bricks, put it under the tire. Mother freaker is geared high. <laughs> like you don't need. I'm taking off in first, and it feels like what I would expect second. What I would expect second to feel like. Yeah, that coolant makes me very nervous. <laughs> yeah. Well, I have a way to fix it. Well, I mean, this is a great thing. No skipping of teeth. That has never happened ever. <laughs> no skipping of chain teeth. Uh, it started, which is real nice. I bent my kickstart, not much, but I need to web this in here so it's one unit is what's happening. But uh, it kickstarted, so I can tweak that back on my weld table and then cap it. I knew two pieces of quarter inch angle iron wouldn't be enough, but it runs really good. But I'm going to get a smaller front tooth uh, for the engine to gear it down because one every one tooth you go down on the front is like going down three on the back i think the saying is so i'll probably go with the smallest one they make and then i'll have to build a chain tensioner because that engine can't move from right there i've like made it now so that's where it goes i need to actually weld in stops so when you put the cradle in that's where it goes how does it feel to finish people say you don't finish well it ain't finished by far <sighs> i feel to ride something <laughs> great I can't wait till Lonnie gets to ride it. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna put a battery on it. The next time we ride it, a battery has to be on it and that electric fan hooked up because I'm gonna go grab my thermostat to see how hot it is. The suspension felt awesome. There was no bump steer. It didn't feel too soft, which I was worried about. Okay, there's where it's at. Yeah, it's hot. Hopefully it didn't hurt nothing. It's about 230. That's a, I don't know what an air cooled, I mean a liquid cooled bike. Yeah, the head's like, 245 degrees the exhaust is 377 Oof. degrees my head is <laughs> what 95.4 95.4 and well, down the overflow can is 200 degrees 192 that's so pretty wild so yeah that radiator you better watch that muffler. so this is my plan for the radiator to shield me I'm gonna come off this bar straight to this one with an upright support. And then because I'm adding this, now I can put a, I'm gonna take a piece of eighth inch aluminum and I'm gonna bend it so it bolts to this tube and then bends with this one and then lips up. One of my buddies, Chris Schmidt, had this idea to make it lip up. Don't just end it right there. Then if coolant was to blow, it would blow over that crack. It needs to. Yeah, I was gonna say, you're not gonna come over here with it any. Uh, well, I still wanna put a bar going from this to the eyebrow to yeah. get me like triangulated and i might even swell it out i don't know yet but just a tiny bit of bracing needs to be done but that would protect me if this cap ever gave way i mean our coolant system is shouldn't let's radiator pop this will breathe always so we're pretty safe i mean it was doing its job it was overflowing but it, it was getting too hot but uh lonnie will definitely ride this hog hopefully it don't take forever to kickstart <laughs> i am sweating i'm happy and I hope you guys are too. And I hope my engine's still good. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> We're rebuilding it soon, but it wasn't smoking. It didn't lock up or nothing. It was running fine. It was just hot. The following Thursday. Well, Lonnie's it was here. sloshing out of this, Becca. Because the brakes never left, left, lost pressure. Yeah, I mean, it's good. And there's no fluid on the line or on this fitting. So I think it was oh that one's leaky but i think it was sloshing out of this all right so this is the next day after the first ride and lonnie has not rode this hog checking brake lines and stuff they feel good they stop good they are good so we overheated it we got it the radiator was it was saying 230 degrees, so hopefully it didn't hurt anything. I mean, it was still running fine when I parked it. I've topped off the coolant, and uh, let's open pray.
Did you turn the gas back on? The what? The gas is on? It don't have it off. Oh, I thought you said you turned it off kill yesterday. Switch? Oh yeah, sorry. Kick that kill switch. <laughs> Pray for my back. <laughs> coming out this lid it's not sealing like it should i'm soaked yeah. i didn't even know it so oh, it's all over the though. seat yeah it's everywhere so i just wanted to shut it off just so it wouldn't overheat because we don't have the electric fan hooked up but when i gear it i got a new sprocket i'm going from a 15 to a 12 on the engine yeah which is like nine tooth bigger on the rear that's going to make a huge like it's pretty decent right now but i wouldn't want to take it in the woods mm -mm. like on some good hills and stuff I think it'd be a little much. You might not get out of first in the woods. I, first is ridiculous. You probably hit what, 30 in first? I don't know. It's ridiculous. I, it in second though, I'm hitting, I'm getting pretty quick. It's yeah, not I like hit. I was flying through here. Yeah, it, it, you are for sure. My supercharged buggy is still outrun it though, I think. Yeah. Um, but when it's re-geared, I think that's what it'll make. But I still feel like my supercharged buggy is just all around faster. I never rode it. I know you're going to in a couple <laughs> weeks, two weeks. You'll get there out it. Lonnie's got so much brake fluid that uh, master cylinders angled a little bit, and it's just not sealing. It's just dripping down. It didn't overheat yet, and it started relatively. I mean, we had the kill switch off first, yeah. ten kicks. So, uh, yeah, I I'll actually find the neutral again. It's a mother finding. I neutral. accidentally shifted the neutral the first. Year. I've done it, yeah. It needs uh, this whole shifter set up. I don't know what it needs, but it needs it. You know what I'm saying? I know what you mean. <laughs> <laughs> so that was a huge success. And Lonnie got the right. It actually kickstarted. We had the kill switch off at first. Yeah. That's so right. actual kicks, I'd say 15 and you had it going. And it would have been more, or sorry, less if we wouldn't have probably flooded a little bit from kicking it with the switch off. So this so, is the one problem. Yeah, the master cylinder lid, since it's that car style, it just sloshes out. Like it gets all over you. My leg was exactly the same way yesterday. It's uh, worth it though, because it was a blasty blast. Yeah, it's fun. We didn't get it to the point of overheating this time, but it's hot. This fan is blocking the airflow, I'm sure, too, not being running. Yeah. And uh, so, suspension, what do you think about it? Perfect. I felt the same way. Suspension yeah, it, is great. It rides like a dream. Everything was nice. You were saying you were going to up the gear or lower the gearing. Yeah. That'll be nice. 
because the front sprocket's a 12, or sorry, a 15 right now, and we've got a 60 on the rear. I can go up a little bit bigger on the rear, but it's gonna be much easier just to pull the engine one off, so I can go down to a 12, which is already ordered. So that'll give us like, that's nine more teeth equivalent to the rear sprocket. So that should be, because right now it takes off in first like you'd want to take off in second. Yeah. Nine teeth is going to fix that for sure. Um, so that, we got to build a chain tensioner because when we put that sprocket on it, we'll mess up the adjustment. Coop, we got to put a battery on it and the thermostat to run the fan for sure because I don't want to blow this hog. <laughs> fix that master cylinder. Don't know how I'm going to do that yet. I might have to put a different master Duct cylinder on it. <laughs> <laughs> we build a gutter system with downspouts that push the fluid outside. So we want to say a massive shout out to Blaster for sponsoring today's video. It was actually, Blaster came in clutch. The engine was locked up. We filled a pull Blaster overnight and it legit freed it up perfect in the morning. I didn't even have to like stress it any. Then we got a massive uh, job to clean up and that's where the brake clean is going to come in. So a massive shout out to Centurial Tools. We'll put the links to their tubing notching tools. We use a lot of them. They're helping hand, they're little magnetic helpers. Like when I'm by myself out here, they're super handy and this would not have been possible without Centurial. Centurial paid for 90% of the parts on this and they also donated their dirt bike that he was actually riding. So he gave up a toy so we could have a toy. Massive shout out to Centurial. Make sure to check them out. Make sure to check out Blaster. We love you and God bless.